The United States will probably default on its debt one day. Did I get your attention? Now there are two ways a sovereign country can default on its debt. There's the way you probably thought of, where the country basically throws in the towel and suspends payment, leaving creditors to collect what they can. The U.S. will not do that. But a country that pays its debts in its own currency, like the U.S. does, has another option. It can print so many dollars that the value of them erodes. The creditors get repaid the right number of dollars. Unfortunately for the creditor, the dollars are worth so little that the country might as well have walked away from its debt. Now, why would the U.S. inflate away its debt? Likely because its leaders will decide they have no choice. You already know about the $1.4 trillion deficit, but the country also has huge obligations not recorded on the balance sheet. Take Social Security and Medicare. The gap between the value of the promises we've made and the money we'll have to pay for them is vast. $46 trillion as of September 30th. For now, there is no plan whatsoever to cover that gap. That won't happen tomorrow. But in the next decades, American politicians will be faced with a choice. Raise taxes and slash government services on the one hand, or inflate the dollar on the other. Any American politician who wants to keep his job will choose default by inflation. It was once unthinkable that the credit quality of U.S. Treasuries would ever become a factor investors would have to consider. Not anymore. The government's deficit expected to top $1.5 trillion in the current fiscal year and $1 trillion for the next several fiscal years. President Obama has convened a deficit commission that's supposed to give its report later this year. My guest today, Dean Baker, who is the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research, said the commission should be broken up and disbanded before it really gets started. Uh, Dean, what is your gripe about this commission? So you wrote, quote, the country can't afford having more incompetence in positions of responsibility, it's time to shut down the deficit commission and save the taxpayers a few dollars. Is it that Simpson and Bowles are incompetent or you just don't like their views on things? It gets to the point of, isn't it better to have some commission than no commission at all? Well, they haven't demonstrated competence in the sense of having a clear recognition of, you know, what our problems are. And in fact, as uh, Mr. Bowles recently addressed uh, the governor's conference, National Conference of Governors, and he told them that, you know, according to the latest Congressional Budget Office projections, we're going to be paying two trillion a year in interest in 2020. Well, I looked it up. Um, the, the Congressional Budget Office says that in their pessimistic scenario, we'll be spending 900 billion a year in interest. Right. Now, we might say 900. Hundred billions, a lot of money, and more than we should pay. We, we could say that, but we can't say that's two trillion. Right. right. So it, here's this guy who's heading up the commission, and he gets it off by a factor of two. Yeah, I question his competence. What do you say to the argument that whether it's nine hundred billion or two trillion dollars, the interest payments on our debt is already astronomical, and we can't afford more debt to help get us out of a debt crisis? Well, first off, we don't have a debt crisis, and that's what the markets are telling us as loudly as they can, because people are holding U.S. government bonds at 10-year treasuries at somewhere around 3%, right. I don't know what's the latest numbers, incredibly low interest rates. So, so this idea we have this debt crisis, this is people's imagination. The markets, the people are putting their money on the line, don't think we have a debt crisis. They're fine with that. In the short term, the best thing we could do for the economy and for, the, for our children is, you know, build up the economy. We aren't doing our children a favor by putting their parents out of work. The U.S. government is currently creating one of the most colossal monuments in the history of the world. It's the U.S. national debt and it threatens to literally destroy the American way of life. For decades now, this generation has been recklessly spending the money of future generations and has been convinced that they have been getting away with it. Americans have been enjoying an obscenely high standard of living, but the party's almost over and the day of reckoning is fast approaching. It's been a great party, but it was fueled by the biggest mountain of debt in the history of the world. As many of us know, it can be extremely fun running a huge credit card bill, but it can be even more painful to pay it off. Now our national credit card bills are starting to arrive and nobody really seems to know what to do. The U.S. national debt will forever be a lasting reminder of the greed and recklessness of this generation. The truth is that the United States is not the richest and most powerful nation in the world. Rather, we're a spoiled, bloated, greedy nation that's run up a debt so big that words simply don't do it justice. The U.S. national debt is so bizarre, it's hard to know whether to laugh or cry about it, for today at least. We'll have some fun with it. The, uh, the following are four, 14 uh, facts about the U.S. government's massive debt problem. 
Uh, number one, as of December 1st, 2009, the official debt of the United States was approximately $12.1 trillion. Now, that's, ba that, that's six months ago, eight months ago nearly, almost at this point. Um, to pay this $12.1 trillion debt would require approximately $40,000 from every single person living in the United States. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, now, the U.S. Congress has approved to increase uh, the U.S. government debt cap to $14.3 trillion. And to pay this increase off would require approximately 6,000 more from every man, woman, and child in the United States. That's $46,000 per person, per every woman, man, child in the United States. You walk through a major city, every person you see walking by you has to contribute $46,000 each to pay off this national debt. The, the U.S. government's debt ceiling has been raised six times since the beginning of 2006. So think about a trillion dollars. How hard is it to spend a trillion dollars? Uh, if you spent one dollar every second, you would have spent a million dollars in 12 days. Now at that same rate, it would take you 32 years to spend a billion dollars. That's at spending one dollar every second. It takes 32 years to spend a billion dollars. Now take that to a trillion dollars, if you spend one dollar every second of every hour of every day, it would take you more than 31,000 years to spend a trillion dollars. Just amazing. Um, when Ronald Reagan took office, the U.S. national debt was about one trillion dollars. The U.S. national debt has more than doubled since the year 2000. Barack Obama's most recently proposed budget anticipates 5.08 trillion in deficits over the next five years. The U.S. national debt on January 1st, 1791, was just 75 million dollars. Today, the U.S. national debt rises by that amount once per hour. That's right, 75 million dollars per hour. Our national debt rises. Uh, the U.S. national debt rises at an average of approximately $3.1 billion per day. In 2010, the U.S. government is projected to issue almost as much debt as the rest of the governments in the world combined. The U.S. government has such a voracious appetite for debt that the rest of the world simply doesn't have enough money to lend us. So now the Federal Reserve is buying most U.S. debt, and the only reason they can do that is because they basically create the money to lend us out of thin air. A trillion ten dollar bills, if they were taped end to end, would wrap around the globe more than 380 times. That amount of money would still not be enough to pay off the U.S. national debt. As if, as if, all, the, if all that wasn't bad enough, according to the 2008 financial report of the United States government, which is an official United States government report, the total liabilities of the United States government, including future Social Security and Medicare payments, that the U.S. government is already committed to pay out now exceeds $65 trillion. That's an official government report claiming that the total liabilities of the United States government, including future Social Security and Medicare payments, the U.S. government is already, at this point, as of last December, eight months ago, is already committed to pay out over $65 trillion dollars. Um, frightening facts, uh, to, to be honest with you. Um, all the more reason to be prepared for uh, a coming economic collapse. Um, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.